Hello, everyone. Carlos here from the Trusted Sec Research Team. So today I want to talk to you about monitoring your Sysmon configuration and Sysmon itself to prevent somebody from tampering or sabotaging the your Sysmon install in your system. Uh, attackers, when they go into a system, one of the things they'll do is that they'll gain situational awareness. As, and once they see Sysmon, they will either operate around it, and if they're not able, they will try to disable it. Um, so today I want to cover how can you actually detect if somebody's trying to do the latter and try to disable Sysmon or alter its configuration or its state. So here's a simple configuration that covers some of the attacks and some of the things that we may see that people actually do against Sysmon itself. First, I want to talk about the channels themselves, the event log channels. This is one thing that an attacker may go in into the system and will actually just simply disable specific channels. Among them, one of them is going to be Sysmon itself. It is a channel that can be disabled. A simple example of this, as you can see here in this PowerShell script, is to simply get a handle on the event log that we want to disable. We just change the is enabled property over to false and then we save the changes. This is something that I just did here with against the WMI event log and then I re-enabled. And we need to track this type of behavior. Now with Sysmon, we can actually track this happening to other event logs. But sadly, we cannot track when somebody does it to its to Sysmon itself. That is why I actually recommend that you enable auditing on that registry key for the win event channels registry key. And then we are able to actually capture somebody trying to execute this action where we're going to see that the object value name of enabled was actually set to one. And when it's actually set to one, what is going to happen is going to disable this event log and then they can take their actions and then they can re-enable the event log itself and we would not be wiser there was only be a gap in the events that would be collected so people can actually kind of disable the firewall they disable windows defender logs they can disable um, sysmon itself double mi operational and many many others um, and this would allow them to operate in this manner this what i did here with powershell can easily be done actually even in .NET or even with C, just using the Windows 32 API, just to reduce the amount of chance of stuff getting logged. So this is one of the things that I actually recommend and that you tier this with Windows event auditing at the same time. Uh, the other one is the Sysmon rule, uh, rules themselves as they are stored in the registry. What happens is that if I go in and I disable uh, or simply overwrite the rules themselves, Sysmon is going to take that value immediately. And more than likely, it will not generate an event. So if we're using group policy, it means that in a couple of minutes, it's going to be re uh, reset back to its original value. But during that time window, an, uh, somebody that has gained access to your system can actually operate without getting detected. Typically, since this is set via GPO, I here do a uh, compounded rule where I'm just checking for the Sysmon registry key itself for the rules. And I'm kind of like this uh, checking that the image is not uh, SVC host. So any other piece of software process or program inside of the system that is actually messing with the rules is going to get captured but gpo not, not it's not going to be added to those logs so that way i can kind of reduce in some of the space uh in my system and also makes my queries a bit faster here the other thing is that people are going to go after the service itself they're going to try to mess with the registry key to disable the service and then cause in some manner a reboot or something on the host. So you will probably not get a service that a service has been altered in any manner 
uh, by them just starting or stopping the service via service control manager. Uh, that is another trick that some attackers may take to reduce the possible detections for their actions on a system. Something that a lot of people do not know is that Sysmon operates with a filter driver and the filter driver can be un unloaded with FLTMC.exe, but there are other tools like Shoe Sysmon, um, Mimikatz itself, that also use the FLT lib library to perform actions uh, against filter drivers. So one of the things that we can actually just check for is for people loading the FLT lib DLL itself. And also we can look at the system event one for, for the driver being unloaded. So let's take an example look here. One of the things I can actually do is I can do FLTMC.exe to list all of the different drivers. Here's my Sysmon driver and I can actually, as administrator, I can unload this driver. I can do unload and then go Sysmon DRV. I'm going to unload this driver right now. The driver has been unloaded and now Sysmon's completely blind. The service is still up. But now if I go over into the event log and I go into system, I'm going to look for an event one and the source is going to be filter manager. And I'm going to look if the driver has been unloaded. This is a good way for me to actually detect if somebody has been tampering with my Sysmon configuration. I'm looking for people either using APIs of the or the FLTMC.exe itself. So just by having kind of like this multi-tier approach, I'm going to be able to have better coverage of the different attacks. And these are kind of like the most common ones that I've seen actors or even attack emulation experts, pen testers, red teamers, purple teamers actually use in their engagements. So yeah, just a simple way of actually protecting Sysmon. This should be part of your rule set. This should be something that you're constantly testing and making sure as you expand your configuration that you actually have coverage for. So that would be an image load. We're looking for the FLTlib.dll. In the case of the registry rules, we're looking at the services. We're looking at the Sysmon configuration, which may vary depending uh, if we actually obfuscated the service itself, remember, and also if somebody's dealing with one of the win EVT channels and disabling them, uh, Sysmon will not catch this one for itself, but we can actually have that coverage with Windows auditing in the security event lock. So I really hope that you found this bit of short nugget of information on how to protect Sysmon itself useful. And as always, remember to give a thumbs up to like and subscribe. Thank you.